Hi, I'm Dr. David Green, CEO of Preferred Pain Center here in Phoenix and Scottsdale, Arizona. Today I'm in front of the Wrigley Mansion, which is one of the Phoenix Points of Pride located here in central Phoenix, Arizona. The mansion was built and completed in 1929 at the same time as the Arizona Bilt Biltmore Resort, which it overlooks. It was built by R William Wrigley, owner of the uh, Wrigley uh, Chewing Gum. gum uh, come on, David. Hi, I'm Dr. David Green, CEO of Preferred Pain Center here in Phoenix and Scottsdale, Arizona. Today I'm in front of the Wrigley Mansion, which is um, a Phoenix Point of Pride, and it was built in 1929. Same time as the Arizona Biltmore Resort, which it's, this is on the top of the hill and it overlooks the resort. It was built as the fifth home of the Wrigleys, and it's the smallest at 17,000 square feet. William Wrigley built it for his wife as a 50th anniversary wedding present. They lived in it for about three to four weeks, a year, maybe, and shortly after it was completed, within two years, William Wrigley passed away, and his wife kept the home for years, then she passed away, then it went through various trusts and banks, and in 1992, Gordy Hormel bought the property. He is heir to the Hormel meatpacking fortune, and he renovated the whole thing, and as of today, it is the Wrigley Mansion Club. People can pay $10 a year and they can go to lunches here, dinners, social functions, they have a great Halloween party, enjoy the views of the whole valley um, and the ornate um, furnitures inside. Um, it's a, a really a sight to behold and everyone that comes to Phoenix should check it out. Um, the topic for today is how do I avoid back surgery? Over 250 to 500,000 back surgeries are performed every year in the United States and the question is how can I not be one of them? If you have chronic back pain or a lot of leg pain from a herniated disc or spinal stenosis or a, a problem that's causing a combination of back and leg pain, how can you tr make it so that you give yourself the best chance of avoiding needing going under the knife? Because out of those 250 to 500,000 surgeries, I'd say an overall success rate for back surgery in this country right now is around 60 to 65 percent. So it's not 95%. It's not always a home run. It might be a single, maybe a double. You know, they've done studies in the past looking at single level fusions for degenerative disc disease. And 50% of those patients still needed pain medication after a year. So it is not a home run by any stretch every time that you undergo surgery. And if you have a good surgery, it may be that years down the road, you may need another surgery. If the level above or below degenerates, it might be, you know, you start to have to chase your tail a little bit with needing more and more interventions. So, the first thing that you want to figure out, and your doctor can tell you this, uh, you can get a second opinion if necessary, is, is my condition elective, quality of life decision, or do you have to have surgery? There's really three needs, right? One's elective slash um, quality of life, meaning you make the decision. Another one is you absolutely have to have the surgery or bad things will happen. Or in the middle is, yes, you have an indication for surgery. You have a relative indication, but if you didn't want to undergo surgery, you could wait it out. And I'll give you an example from each so that we know how to avoid these. If you have a must-have situation, such as what's called cauda equina syndrome, then you got to have it done. Otherwise the deficits that you end up with, like bowel and bladder problems, they might never come back. So I'm not talking about that. You can't avoid that, okay? In the middle here, you have a, well, let's, one more over here. If you have a herniated disc that's pushing on a nerve root, and you start to have weakness from that, like let's say it's in your neck, uh, well, we're talking about the low back, so let's say it's in the low back and you start to have weakness with lifting up your foot. It's called a foot drop, okay? That then becomes, a relative indication for surgery because you're having motor weakness and if the longer that you wait it's unclear if it's ever going to get better so having a motor weakness slat meaning deficit neurologic deficit is a relative indication for surgery it should be heavily considered it's not mandatory but it should be considered so then when you get into the middle category of, yeah, you have an indication for it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's an, an example. Let's say you have degenerative disc disease. 
and you have six months of consecutive conservative treatment, meaning physical therapy, pain medications, pain injections. Well, studies show that after six months of consecutive conservative treatment, then there is an indication to have surgery. So that could be something to consider. Another one would be if you have a herniated disc and you undergo epidural injections, physical therapy, pain medication. If you undergo that for six to eight weeks, there is an indication to have surgery for that and the outcomes can be very good. Having said that, if you can avoid the surgery and just deal with some of the pain and the numbness, the outcomes are no different after a year than if you had surgery versus if you didn't. So that's sort of in section B. Now section A is if you've had really none of these treatments or if you have something like uh, degenerative scoliosis or uh, degenerative disc disease, these things in and of themselves didn't kill anybody, okay? Nobody died from arthritis. If you have arthritis in your back and you have multi-level arthritis and the pain is very um, debilitating, it's not going to kill you. It becomes what's called a quality of life issue. So the way you can avoid surgery there is all of the non-operative types of treatment that Preferred Pain Center, for instance, can offer. One, you don't need a pain center for, it's just activity avoidance. Meaning, if you golf six days or seven days a week and it hurts a lot after the fourth time, why not cut it back a little bit? Go see a movie or do something different so that you don't have, you're not putting yourself in that situation. If you're a jogger and your back hurts from jogging so much, switch to swimming, maybe cycling, so you won't be putting so much pressure on your joints. So activity avoidance can help very much. Another one is very simple, over-the-counter medications, such as glucosamine, chondroitin, um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, just be careful to stay within the recommended dosage on the bottle. And another one would be such Tylenol, acetaminophen. Very simple, millions of people around the country utilize those medications with very good relief. You don't have to use them regularly. You can use them for a few days at a time, a few weeks, if you're having a flare-up of the pain. The next level up would be physical therapy and rehab and chiropractic treatment. Those are the types of things that we offer at our rehab center and they can be extremely effective at strengthening up the muscles around the spine to help take pressure off of the disc spaces, so for say degenerative disc disease, spinal arthritis, you can help take pressure off of those joints. So pain relief can be tremendous. Aerobic exercise such as riding uh, an exercise bike, walking, swimming. Those types of things have been shown in studies to help decrease the amount of back pain that people are having and to be extremely beneficial. It might entail some weight loss. So those are a few of the starting things. Well, what next if those really aren't doing it or if they've gotten maybe 30% of the pain down? Okay, well moving into the next phase could be some interventional treatments from a pain doctor. Our pain doctor at Preferred Pain Center can do facet blocks, which can be very effective, epidural injections if there's a leg pain component to the situation, or there's a burning treatment called radiofrequency ablation. That can give pain relief for a year and a half. So undergoing a back surgery at three levels for degenerative arthritis, bad idea, bad idea. If you can have a radiofrequency ablation at those three levels, and decrease your pain by 70% for a year, that's amazing. The outpatient, you know, you go home the same day, there's no real incision, there's no uh, big time uh, recuperative efforts. You know, that's one way to avoid surgery. Now, other things that can be done, spinal decompression therapy is something that we offer at Preferred Pain Center that has been shown to be revolutionary. It's FDA cleared, it's low cost, patients, very gentle for patients. It can help a lot with spinal stenosis, degenerative disc disease, degenerative arthritis. Those types of things can be extremely beneficial. Now, there are some holistic types of treatments such as acupuncture, um, massage. Those have been shown in research studies to be beneficial for acute and chronic low back pain. So all this information is on our website, but I wanna make it clear that most people who have a back problem don't need back surgery. In fact, I would venture to say that 90 to 95% of people who have back pain will not need surgery if they can put themselves in the quality of life category and do some of these non-operative treatments 
um, to get through it on a regular basis or it might be a short-term situation. Anyway, preferredpaincenter.com is our website. A lot of videos, animations, testimonials, educational articles. Um, also give us a call today. We'll get you in within 24 hours. 602-507-6550. I'm Dr. David Green, Preferred Pain Center. Your pain stops here.